Hey guys, I'm McGann and welcome to another episode of There I Read It where I'm going over the Harry Potter books chapter by chapter for the first time ever in my life and today we are on the Goblet of Fire chapter called Mad Eye Moody which is chapter number so many chapters to remember now 14. So we start the chapter the kids are having breakfast and we see Fred, George, and Lee Jordan all plotting how they're going to age themselves because they want to enter the Triwizard Tournament, but they're not old enough. And then we hear that the trio, Ron, Harry, and Hermione, are taking Herbology, Care of Magical Creatures, Double Divination, at least Ron and Harry are, and then Hermione's taking Arithmacy. Arithmancy. I'm sorry. I don't even know what that is still. It sounds like fancy math, honestly. And Hedwig has still not returned from the Sirius Black mission to go find him and deliver him that letter from before school started. So, you know, Harry's getting kind of worried, like, where's my bird? What's happening here? Then they go to their Care of Magical Creatures class and a creature called the Boobotuber is introduced. And these are these slug-like thing that they want to collect the pus from because the pus is worth a lot of money. Then there's also blast-ended scroots, which are lobster-like, but they have no shells and they're kind of like pets. And then Norbert the dragon gets mentioned from the first book, which is um, curious. I wonder if he's going to end up resurfacing because without going back to check, I feel like Norbert gets a random reference in every book. Like there is some reason that the author wants to keep that dragon in the forefront of our minds at least a tiny bit. But then the kids go to their next meal and Hermione is finally eating again. She is not on some protest hunger strike anymore. And when they ask her about it, she's basically like, oh, there's better ways to affect change. Then Ron and Harry go off to divination where Trelawney sees difficult times ahead for Harry. And she says that Saturn was under a position of power at Harry's birth. I don't know if that's going to be relevant later, but it stood out enough that I thought I should write this down. And then Ron, apparently turning into a teenage hormone monster, uh, made a weird little crack where he says, can I have a look at Uranus too? To one of the females in the class. So a um, little bit inappropriate and cheeky there, Ron. <laughs> Better watch your step. I know this was, you know, set in the 90s, but now it's 2022. You get big cancellation trouble for that kind of stuff. Oh, then the name Professor Vector is mentioned, and I don't think I've caught that name before. I'm assuming that's the Arithmancy Professor. One day I'm actually going to look up what Arithmancy is. Then we see an issue of the Daily Prophet in which Arnold Weasley is in there and he's not being painted very well. It's not a very flattering light. It's actually Arthur Weasley, if you haven't put that together. But for whatever reason, the author Rita Skeeter called him Arnold Weasley, probably to illustrate that she just doesn't think he's very important. So why would his name be? Kind of a very narcissistic vibe to get out of this woman already, because when you think of a news reporter, you want to think of somebody who is very honest and unbiased and that they're going to get their facts right. And here they are messing up something as simple as a name. And not that that doesn't happen in regular newspapers, too. I mean, it does all the time, honestly. But... I think that is what we're supposed to be taking from this, is that Rita Skeeter is a little bit iffy of a reporter. And oh, yes, the whole article is about how the ministry has been embarrassed because of the situation with Moody and the trash cans going all over the place that they mentioned in an earlier chapter. And that, you know, Arthur Weasley was there and he basically flubbed the situation and it should have been handled better, blah, blah, blah. You know, normal anti-government newspaper rhetoric, I guess. Oh, and then we get this moment where Malfoy is kind of going at Harry in his normal snaky fashion, but Moody picks up on it from a different part of the room area, whatever exactly he was standing in. I think he might have been coming down the stairs. And Moody turns Draco Malfoy into a white ferret and starts just tossing him all over the place. It, it, insane. Like, like as a 30-something-year-old reading that, I was just like, oh, his father should hear about this one. And I don't know how Draco didn't die because he was getting bounced off the ceilings and floors. Like, ferrets are not very sturdy creatures. They're very long and cylindrical. So if you take one and snap it around like a rope, you're gonna have a dead ferret. So it seems like a really risky choice for, you know, something to turn a student into. 
especially to beat them up. And, you know, the the whole thing was that Harry and Draco were fighting over was kind of like a yo mama battle. And it just, you know, it was such a petty, childish thing for a teacher to get into in that way. So that's, um, it's very curious. But I will say my last note here is that Moody doesn't care about Draco and his my father this and that. You know, that threat means nothing to him. But what what I think is interesting is that... For Moody to come into the room to not really know exactly what was going on or who started it or that kind of thing and to transfigurate Draco and publicly humiliate him like that. I mean, the only benefit to acting that way, to doing that, is to get Harry on his side. To be like, I got your back, buddy. We're friends now. Almost like a you owe me type of mentality, type of relationship establishment. So that is very interesting. And it makes me think that Moody is not being very authentic because why should he want to win over Harry Potter for any given reason? You know, uh, he's a teacher. Obviously, they can have a, a good teacher-student relationship. But why would you go in and want to be like, I'm on your side, buddy? It, it, something's off about that. I, I'm not sure that I remember what from the movie because now it's been like way too long since I've seen these movies, but it doesn't feel right. But that is all of my notes for this time. There was kind of a lot going on in this chapter, but not really a ton to talk about. It wasn't an especially huge chapter, so it might be a little bit short of a video this week. I, I know I've debated since there's so many chapters in this to do multiple videos in a week, but honestly, I started this book in March of 2021. It is now March of 2022, so I, I think I need to keep giving myself this as slow as possible pace because my mind is all over the place. I'm having trouble keeping up with my normal work and it's uh, it's showing, I think. But anyways, I thank you guys for watching. I would love to have your comments uh, in the matter on what you think of this chapter and what Moody is doing. No spoilers, though, because I have not read ahead. And we will see you next time, family members. Bye! Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.